Hey, Mystic Michaela spiritual family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Today, we're talking about divine timing. What is divine timing exactly? Well, it's the belief that everything in your life happens at exactly the right moment, that it maybe doesn't happen for a reason. Even when things don't make sense, divine timing is the belief that The universe is placing the people, the things, the challenges that make sense and that you're ready for in your path at the right time. But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. All right. I got got a lot of questions on this one. Right off the bat, I'm going to go. I'm just going to go for it. All right. So there's a lot of quotes people use with divine timing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it'll happen when it happens. Yeah. Okay. Or everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Right. Right. So it is what it is. It is what it is. (laughs) No, okay. it'll come when you're when it's ready. Right. So I mean, <laughs> my, I, I guess the question I have right off the bat is, you know, it, yes, it, they they all sound nice, and I assume it's really kind of just justifying your circumstances <laughs> to say that, you know, like, right, you know, if it just didn't happen for you, like to make yourself feel better or make the person around you, the people around you, feel better. I, I mean, but are, I mean, are these really true? Is it really true that you know if this thing doesn't happen? All right, it's going to happen. Or maybe it's just never going to happen. Are you trying to say that these are just things we tell ourselves and other people to make it through a very disappointing life? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm that's getting what at. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, could it just be these are things that we just say to justify, you know, when things don't go our way? Right, because you hear it a lot. But you're always trying to force your timeline. I mean, ever since I met you. Sure. That's just what you've always been trying to do. (laughs) But the thing with divine timing is you can't see it unless you look at it with hindsight. That's the only way you can see divine timing. There's no way to understand how it works unless you look at your past and you're like, okay, I see it. I I get it now how that worked out or how that played out. Because a lot of things that happen or didn't happen, you see now, well, that's, that was for the best. All right. But for that moment in time. Yes. Like when you, you know, you, you know, I, I, they use a lot on our Facebook group, the Mr. Kale spiritual family. They, right. they usually use a lot, you know, it'll happen, it'll happen, <laughs> okay, or they happen for a reason, all this stuff. <laughs> and, you know, in my head, I always think like, well, just maybe, you know, that's what, that is, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I think with you, you want to believe in it. Right. Like really badly. Yeah. Like you really do want to believe in it, but it's just funny because. You always think you're right. So I can see... And I, when I met you, I remember you saying, I feel like God laughs at me all the time. You, you're like... I remember you saying, like, if there is a God, he just laughs at me. Right. Like, I mean, obviously, I was born at 1110. <laughs> but, yeah. Not 1111, 11, 11, But you always want something and then you have this fight with like the universe that you're correct and you should get it i mean i since i've known you like you're so sure about something and then i know that if you look in your hindsight you'll you will admit that actually i was full of it or i did not know a thing yeah <laughs> so. So this is very true we're actually get to that after a quick break but i, I did have to look this up so i did want to look up it is what it is you know mm-hmm. people say this all the time It is kind of annoying. I probably say it myself. It is what it is. It is what it is, right. (laughs) So, you know, I looked it up. Like, maybe there's a... When did this come about? And I did actually find something. It actually came about, they believe, in 1949 from this guy, J.E. Lawrence, who wrote about it in the Nebraska State Journal. So it's from Nebraska. Okay. It comes from Nebraska. And basically, it was this guy who was really green, probably, Mm. I assume, really green guy and all he was doing was talking about his land like how harsh the land was yeah and, uh you know the, the the basically the the land being unforgiving and things like that and sure in this he just says well it is what it is yeah so was, was he just, a farmer was he, he like must have been like a farmer yeah okay. he must have been like a farmer yeah like i think that actually makes a ton of sense because to sit there i'm sure somebody that deals with the land or, or gets their living from the land you have no control right so that's actually a great place to even think about divine timing because like there is zero control a lot of years, especially if there's bad crops or bad weather or bad patterns or who even knows what. If you sit there and try to think about it and try to get some logic to it, you'll go crazy. So you have to say something like, it is what it is, shrug. Right. Or like, you know, when 
our former vice president of the United States, Dick Cheney, shot somebody while they were out hunting, and then he basically says it is what it is. Is that what he said? Yeah, suppose, <laughs> suppose, he said? supposedly he said that. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly he said it is what it is. You know, I just shot the guy, accident. It know? was an accident, an so accident. he's like, I'm, you know, it is what it, it is. is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I say that a lot, too, yeah. like to the kids. Yeah. They're like, I don't like that this happened or so-and-so got this and I didn't. And I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. You yeah. were born to me and they were born to them. You know, sorry. It is what it yeah. is. Yeah. All right. Well, there's a lot of that going around, I guess. All right. So we're going to do a real quick ad from Upstart. And then I'm going to talk about a time when divine timing, well, did, just didn't work out for me. We've all been there. Seemingly out of nowhere, you get hit by an unexpected expense or bill. When that happens, it can feel like the weight of the world is coming down, and it's normal to not know where to turn. Luckily, Upstart is here to help. Upstart-powered personal loans can help you pay down high-interest debt all online with simple and easy under to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit card debts, consolidating high-interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash KYA. That's upstart.com slash KYA to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash KYA. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. All right, so let me go through a time where I think divine timing just did not work out for me. Okay. You know, it was, let's go back a little bit. Um, I was still teaching. Yes. You were, now we know your, your story, the origin story from last week. Right. You were, you know, basically in that time period where you were just working a little bit, you know, here and there doing a couple of email readings, but yeah, now everybody knows about that. Doing the aura that. thing, like, you know, part-time. Right. Yeah, you still needed to work. Right. Right. So... Like a regular job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank, you, that, thank you. Right. Okay. So you had come up with a, an idea for me. Yes. To try to get me out of teaching. Like we, we there was like, like, let's just, just step back one more okay. second here. I mean, I was miserable most days coming back. I was just about to say. So you came up with some ideas. I have to ideas. set the scene. Yeah, set the scene. The you, scene you're no better is at that. living with a grumpy Eeyore slash grizzly bear personality. Like sometimes you were just like depressed and what was to me. And then sometimes you were just like raging, not in a scary way and just kind of like grumpy dude way. And it was just so hard to live with you because you were so miserable. Plus I felt awful for you because I just felt how like depleted you were and you were just so over teaching. So I was like, oh my gosh, I have to, I got to get creative thinking about what he can do like else. Okay. Okay. That's so, where we were at. Yeah. It was bad. No, it was really bad. Right. So you came up with another job that was maybe a little similar to teaching, which was to work at a camp. Yes. At a sleepaway camp. A sleepaway camp. All right. So you, I think you put me on some <laughs> weird directory. Yeah. There's an American Association of Camps or something. Yeah. I still get their emails. And I like I would get all these like job opportunities and all these, you know, you know, applications to apply for. So I was looking through them and I'm like, all right, well, all right, let me, let me see. Maybe I'll, maybe I, this is something I can do. And I looked through all the jobs and I guess the one that I had put my mind that I would be willing to do would be the camp director. Yeah. Camp director. Camp director. You couldn't director. do anything else. Right. In charge of the entire camp. Yes. The yeah. whole thing. Right. Cause they had other jobs, you know, like assistant camp director. I was like, no, no you're I'm not, not doing, doing that. Like sports director. Sports director. They had all sorts of directors, oh, yeah, but you had to everything. be like the head director. Yes. There was like waiter. <laughs> I was like, all right. No. <laughs> there was maker of bug juice. Uh, if you went to camp, I you know what that is? I don't know. You don't know what bug juice is? Well, okay. okay. But anyway. What were your so, qualifications? Well, <laughs> you know, looking back at it, cause I did do a few interviews. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And they did ask me that every, yes. in every interview. What are your qualifications to be camp director? And like even on the application, it said you needed like four to seven years experience yeah. working in camps. And the only experience I really had was I was I did go to sleepaway camp. 
for many years. Yeah. So I, I was a camper. Right. Uh, never a counselor, but what I was I a camper. What we didn't realize was this is like a real career path you can take. You go to People go to college for it. They prepare their whole lives to be camp directors. They do all the other jobs before they're the camp director. And you just wanted to go straight shot to camp director. Yeah, I'm a red aura. I but mean, you were a it. teacher for so many years. We're like, come on, like how different is it? Well, that's what I was trying to like, tell these people. I'm going the- to keep them all alive <laughs> and occupied. Like, I yeah. promise. Well, that's like- what, yeah, in all, these, <laughs> in all these interviews that I had, right. which obviously I did not get the job, but I kept telling them, you know, hey, I'm a teacher. You know, how hard could this be? Right. I went to camp myself. You know, I the- ate the s'mores and did all those things. So I never went to camp, okay? Yeah. So I'm from Buffalo. You're from Long Island. I never went. I think it's more of um, maybe a Long Island thing and different areas are more about sleepaway camp. I never even heard sleepaway camp was something that happened on the movies, not something that was real to us. Like my only experience with sleepaway camp was parent trap with with Lindsay Lohan. So I, that's all I know about sleepaway camp. So you actually went to sleepaway camp a lot growing up. Isn't that like, how many weeks are you away from home? Um, some, I think some were eight weeks. That's a long time. How old are you? Um, middle, middle schoolish. Little, so yeah, you, some years my parents did work there, so I went okay. up with them. So they would work like my dad did work so at a couple camps. The youngest camps. people go like eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think really? so. Yeah, I didn't go like when I was real, real young. So, but yes, you could go like that, that age. And they okay. And what like where do you sleep? I can't. You're so picky. Like you won't even oh, no, sleep no. in let, certain let, hotels. Let so me explain something to you. <laughs> I okay, you know how like some people get like camper of the month or there's like employee of the month. <laughs> I used to get the worst camper Did of the you? month. I believe like, that. If, yeah, if they actually had an award like worst camper <laughs> on, you know, at Sleepaway Camp, it would have been me. Why did you complain? Oh, yeah, I didn't do I You're was You're not a great participator. No, so. I I refused to part for, Okay, there was a lot of things I oh, we're going this direction. All right. So we're getting off topic a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, first thing I refused to play. Like I, you know, if I didn't like the activity, I wasn't playing. So what they do with you? The, well, sometimes I would, well, sometimes I'd run away. Sometimes I'd get like, and they always made you play. Like they, they always wanted you to play. Yeah. It was like, no matter what you had to play. Okay. And like, sometimes I'm like, no, I'm not going to play. Right. So if they try to make me play. You're like red aura. Yeah. Red at that. I wish I knew I was a red aura at the time. I just like ran away into the woods. Usually kids, like say they should have given you more leadership or something. Yeah. Like well, they should have made you, it's Scott's team well, or they, something. Yes. And actually. Did they do that? Yeah. One year they actually did. The, did you play that year? That year I played. <laughs> yeah, they made me the captain. Of, like they had a baseball did league. Did they do that? Okay. In the camp. So and, someone figured you out. Yeah. They made me the captain of a team. Oh my God. But they gave me all the worst players. Yeah. You're so just, we came in last place. But that we works came in last for you place. because you love to help people. So you would have loved to like have the players with, that weren't good. That actually fits you even better. It did. I, it was that was. I actually loved that because they were like your squad then. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I did love that. Um, okay, so somebody yeah, figured so, you. Out. Something did. Yeah, hockey. The like, hockey. I was always good at hockey. Okay. So I would always play that one. Like the rollerblade yeah, hockey or but, floor hockey or something. Right. But they okay. wanted me, you know, to try out for the camp play and sing happy birthday. Oh, like the theater. The theater. Yeah. Oh no. And I refused. I like. Okay. That- I, you know, I got out on stage and they're like, all right. And the piano starts playing and they're like, okay, you can sing now. And I just ran off stage, <laughs> <laughs> ran into the woods. <laughs> I ran into the woods a lot. Okay. So you yeah. ran into the woods until, yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I mean, instructional swim, there was no way. Oh, you wouldn't go in the water? No, it wasn't Cause- a pool. It was, a, it was the lake. And there was, oh, you you still don't go in like lakes. And there stuff. there were you snakes. Oh. I, w- I saw snakes in there, okay, and on. I was not going in. But they're like, no, wait, what you- state does this happen in? I went to camp in uh, New Hampshire, New and New York. Okay, so two different camps. Okay, New, New Hampshire. Yeah. Didn't your mom told me they like you were so bad they sent you to a different camp or like the the rich people camp or something? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly true. Didn't they so do that? yes, that's true. So basically, what happened? Like I, you know. Again, I guess this is why I'm not green. But they, I was so bad of a camper, they didn't know what to do with me because I kept refusing. But, How old were you at this point? I'm really bad with this kind of This thing. naughty camper. This naughty camper. But Do you remember how tall you are or anything? Yeah. Or I'm I mean, trying I'm, to give you something to I'm remember in, your body. Probably like 13-ish, I think. Okay. 13 around there. Okay, okay. So you're 13, you're a horrible camper. Yeah. So they had inside the camp, I guess if you paid extra money, they would take you to what's called tennis camp. Oh, that's the rich people. Yeah, camp. and th- and okay, 
so, within the camp. So it was like okay. within the sleeping with kids camp, there was another camp. That's not which nice. Every afternoon, yeah. these kids would get on a bus oh. and go to this beautiful indoor, luscious, with real food, <laughs> tennis courts. So I'm like, wait a second. Why am I not going to this? Right. So they, you know, I worked it out. Where's this bus going to? <laughs> and I had an in because my cousin Lenny worked at this camp. Oh, okay. So he, your cousin Lenny was a teacher. He was, ac- yeah, okay. he was actually the, the camp director. Oh, cousin Lenny was a camp director. Yeah. Okay. So he got me on the bus every day mm. to go to the tennis, mm-hmm. the tennis camp within the camp. That was and, nice oh of my, him. Oh, I hope you air- thank him. It was wonderful. <laughs> Let me explain yeah. to you. Okay. There's no bug juice. There's regular drinks. Right. We had a budget. We could get like hot dog like regular food like chicken fingers hot dogs Almost like off the menu and off stuff? the menu oh. yeah, like it was a restaurant did you have your own tennis racket i had my own tennis racket okay. yeah they gave, i think they gave me a tennis racket yeah all indoor courts were they all dressed differently than you though like were you in just your regular umbros i don't know what you wear back then <laughs> <laughs> your umbros i probably had my umbros i don't know <laughs> And there maybe something yeah. nicer. Yeah, I'm just getting a whole visualization and of all these like rich kids in like matching white tennis outfits, probably. and then you like, hey, because you're yeah. chewing on a French fry. But hey, really- what's for dessert? <laughs> what do you got for dessert around here? But it was really good because <laughs> no, it was really cool because they got real coke. <laughs> Well, that's what it is. It was like a few hours a day. I got away from that crappy camp <laughs> with the bugs and the heat and everything, and I'm in this nice place. Oh, so the ca- oh the cabins aren't air conditioned. That could oh, get no, hot at night. No, yeah, no way. Oh, Even yeah. in New Hampshire, that and could I don't, get hot. I don't need to tell you what happened in the cabins at night. So um, it's a lot of boys. It was weird. Ew. Okay, yeah, okay, we're not going there. But <laughs> but it was really cool because the tennis camp they had um, like everyone was ranked. It was it was like right up my alley. So you would oh, play people. It was very to, competitive. Yeah, you play people to try to go up your rankings and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, I had, I was pretty, you know, I was always like pretty athletic, like not a great athlete or anything, but I was always athletic at things. So I uh-huh. picked, you know, I was good at the, so I was actually really good at tennis too. Yeah. And I actually was like moving up the ranks oh, really? of the uh, players. Yeah. So I, I would always like challenge people. Oh. You know, cause I have that, you know, once I get it uh, going. You're challenging yeah. all the rich kids in their white outfits. Yeah. Exactly. And you're like, with your umbro, you're yeah. like, hey, you. It's either that I was, <laughs> or I was lounging around, you know, eating all the fancy foods, you know. <laughs> Shrimp cocktail, All lobster. Right. So right, anyway. these are your qualifications. You're like, yeah. hey, I can be the camp director. Right. I went to tennis <laughs> camp. I weaseled right. my way in. Yeah. They got real coke. Yeah. Okay. All right. But so. anyway, so that's, that was basically my only experience I had, you know, when I went on all these interviews and it was, all, it was always a no. So every interview was a no. I never got the job. Yes. It was, all, I, and you really wanted it. You were really into it. Yeah. You were going to do it. We were all going to move there for the summer. Yeah. We were all going to move <laughs> And there. I would have had to put the psychic greetings on hold for the summers yes. to do it because we had the two kids at the time and yes. we were going to, we had it all planned out. And you actually did get some, some of the interviews did go a little further. They were like, maybe. They must have been very desperate or something. Like, been. maybe. Um, but, you know, yeah. and then actually one summer where I thought I was kind of close on this like musical camp. Yes. <laughs> oh my drama gosh, camp yes. Or something. It was a drama camp. Very close. But you were also at that same time starting to pick up a little bit mo- momentum. Yeah, I remember that. In, in your business. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, if I would have gotten that job there that would have taken a few months Well, that's the thing like when you say divine timing didn't work out for you actually it did work out because divine timing isn't just things that you want to happen it divine timing is also when something doesn't happen that probably shouldn't have and it took yeah. the, and it's i feel like when we were doing that for that couple of years just like really trying to get you those jobs like it was a placeholder even like a sad place to put our hope. Yeah. So we could just to put, you could just, we just needed a little more time for our thing, the Know Your Aura vibe to grow and catch on and just be a little bit stronger so that yeah. that could carry us forward. Cause I would have had to pause it to do yeah. that, which I was willing to do because you were so All miserable. Right. Well, with your hindsight, <laughs> it looks like divine timing it did, uh, work out. did work out for me it is what it is okay okay we do a couple ads when we come back seven uh not seven but a few signs that you divine timing is happening for you hey scotty hey guys talking about wild grain uh, okay i absolutely <laughs> love wild grain yeah he does i actually just had two croissants during this taping <laughs> you did we're not even joking it's I, so good i've never had better sourdough bread in my life during the pandemic, I was trying to make my own bread. Maybe you were one of the millions of people trying to do the same thing. And I kept seeing sourdough starter recipes, and I was like, I don't know how to do that. Well, guess what? What if I told you, okay, you can 
Get all the flavor and none of the time and the work involved. Well, you can with Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first bake from frozen box for artisanal bread. Plus, they have amazing rolls, pastries, and even handmade pastas. Wild Grain, get this, only uses clean ingredients such as unbleached and non-GMO flour and utilizes a slow sourdough fermentation process that's better for you and tastes better than anything you can find in a grocery store. My family's obsessed plus for every new member wild grain donates six meals to the greater boston food bank they've donated over 120,000 meals so far here's how it works sign up and choose which type of box you want to receive and how often then wild grain delivers for free a box of breads pastas and pastries with easy to follow instructions Every item bakes from frozen. It's like frozen in 25 minutes or less. Traveling, freezer already stocked, no problem. It's easy to reschedule, skip, or even cancel. Are you hungry already? For a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash KYA to start your subscription, you heard me, the croissants in every box free and $30 off your first box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash KYA, that's wildgrain.com slash KYA, or you can use promo code KYA at checkout. It can be very difficult to find skincare products with clean, effective ingredients that actually work. Well, Osea has been making these clean and ultra-effective skincare and body care products for over 25 years. They use seaweed as their product's star ingredient, and they're vegan and climate-neutral certified. Let me tell you about their celebrity-loved body oil. It is part of my daily routine. I feel weird if I don't use it now. (laughs) I give it to everybody I can as a gift because once you get it, you're done. That's it. Your skin is becomes healthy looking, smooth, nourished, glowing, and it's just the perfect addition to anybody's body care lineup. And especially as summer approaches, we want those glowing legs and their body oil does that for you. Since 1996, Osea has been creating clean, vegan, and cruelty-free products that are safe for your skin and the planet. And they've done it again. Osea's new body butter is softening, nourishing, and has the most amazing citrus scent. It's even clinically proven to moisturize skin for up to 72 hours. Its rich texture feels so good and applies so smoothly without being sticky. It makes your skin look so moisturized and healthy and a little really does go a long way. I've had a chance to try it and let me tell you, I am all about being hydrated. It makes me feel more confident and it's amazing for legs and feet in the summer months. So I encourage you to try it for yourself and you can find your new skincare and body care favorites at oseamalibu.com and you'll get a special discount just for being our listener. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with promo code KYA at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and orders over $50 get free shipping. You're going to want it all. Trust me. Go to Osea, O-S-E-A, Malibu.com and use code K-Y-A. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. All right. So when you told me the episode this week was going to be about divine timing, of course, I want to do a little research. So I looked up the signs that divine timing is happening. It's working for you. Okay. And I mean, basically they say there's like seven signs. There could be more, you know, depending on what uh, website you go to. (laughs) Um, you know, if you want to do a little more research, it's probably more than seven. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably unique to you. Too. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've did the ones that I could like actually understand a little bit. So, all right. So let's go through these. I'll give okay. it to you and then you tell me what you think. All right. All right. Synchronicities. I mean, I didn't even know really what that meant, but I guess it's something <laughs> that like, you know, if you think about a person and then hours later they call you is that something yeah and i'm gonna be ta- in the speech i'm about to do what, what's coming up the next part i'm gonna be talking about more what you have to do to get aligned so that di- divine timing can really do its thing for you but yeah these things like synchronicities and these other signs are gonna bring up this is more assurance that it's happening and the path that you're on is going to bring you to it so synchronicities are totally when i mean synchronicity is the language of spirit so it's when coincidence gets so much 
it can't it has to be more than that it would be like illogical to say it's coincidence anymore so it's something that's so ridiculously coincidental it becomes synchronistic that's how spirit speaks to you so it could be just the same message repeated all over the place somebody says something to you you see a sign then you open up your social media then somebody else says something and then you see a number and you're just like what is this like what what are you trying to tell me like so it's just too much like bombarding so like let's say for me like divine timing i wanted a piece of chocolate and then you know i'm kind of walking down the street and i see like a sign for chocolate you know and then i you know open my instagram and someone messaged me about chocolate that would be kind of like yeah sure well, in like is, a really simplistic world okay. like <laughs> yeah okay because that's happened to me before yeah i yeah. know so i okay all right all right <laughs> well i think it's like sometimes if you if you're looking for love and oh, okay. okay and all of a sudden you're like you know you're looking for love and you've just surrendered it to the universe you know what you guys figure it out i'm just gonna work on getting in the right frame of mind and you know divine timing will take care of the rest and all of a sudden then you start seeing the ads pop up for dating or you know your friend mentions oh i have a fr- i have my, pro- my friend's brother was really interested in meeting you you hear that then you start seeing signs for you your attention starts being drawn to like a magazine cover that says love or you know so you start getting pulled in a lot of different directions You're like okay maybe this is my sign to get open to it it's coming like right prepare myself all right i do love chocolate but i don't know <laughs> yeah well for you it's chocolate Fine. and and that's where you're at and yeah. that's okay yeah all right it is what it is okay. it is yeah <laughs> all right clairvoyant dreams oh yeah okay so this one right off the bat does not work for me because i don't, <laughs> dream. don't dream i had one dream once about michael strahan that everybody <laughs> knows about but other than that i don't dream so i guess that's not working for me well clairvoyant dreams are i guess they're yeah dreams are always a thing if you remember your dreams there can be very interesting dreams that happen when divine timing is kind of prepping itself to open you up to okay this is happening this is coming you can have dreams even about the past a lot of times i'll hear i'll see people including myself will start having dreams about past situations so it could be past relationships past traumas past people that you thought you forgot about and within those things there's a lot of lessons brought up so a lot of times while you're waiting for you're just sitting and not waiting but you're prepping yourself for divine timing to do its thing your one of your jobs is to work on stuff that's going to come to the surface and that can be through clairvoyant dreams like why am i thinking about my coworker that i had a fight with 10 years ago and i haven't talked to, to them since well there's a lesson there there's something there that's going to be applicable for your moving forward so little things like that can happen in clairvoyant dreams all right i mean and it does say here in this article that it's pr- that is when you're precisely in tune with the universe so if i guess if you're not dreaming then I'm out of tune. I don't know. No, because you don't have to dream. It's just an easier way to let your guard down, your ego guard down, and communicate with the other side. But you can do that during meditation. You can do that. Everyone has their own way to connect. You can, maybe you just like to hike. You know, some people like to work on a project. Some people do art. You write, you journal, you take a nature walk, you help people. It's just a way to get insights. That's all. All right. Quiet the mind and get insights. You don't have to be a dreamer. Okay. All right. The next one I have here <laughs> is spotting symbols. And I know for this one, a lot of people on the Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family oh, page, yes. they find feathers. Feathers everywhere. <laughs> um, coins, they say. I think this is actually written for you. Uh, they probably – it says a squirrel standing on your porch <laughs> every time you walk outside <laughs> – could be a sign of divine timing working. <laughs> and this is actually true. We now do have a squirrel that every time Mr. Michaela steps out the back door, he, he basically, or, or she, I don't know which, which it is, but she, the squirrel runs up to you. It's like literally inches from your feet now. It's my squirrel friend. Yeah. So this one was written for you, We're obviously. Cool. You know, my neighbor across the street, her little girl, oh man, I have her on, but she's six. She finds, <laughs> she finds whenever they're going through something. I love, I love this story. Whenever they're going through something, um, the little girl finds bobby pins. And it's gotten to the point it's synchronistic. So their grandma, um, my so it's my neighbor's grandma, always wore her hair up with bobby pins. So that's kind of their symbol for her and the little girl across the street she's six i mean she's been doing it since she was little she finds bobby pins all over the place and they went on a really they've had um 
you know, a hard time this year and they went on a, a special family vacation and it was a really good together time with, um, I guess the grandma's whole family and the little one, they went to Disney world and she found a, a bobby pin at Disney world. I mean, just, she finds them all the time and it's just kind of a little way where it's like, you know what? We're okay. It's going to be okay. We're together. Families, everything, like whatever that meant, that's the feeling they get when it's just really sweet. But um, symbols, yes. symbols can be very unique to you. They can be feathers, they can, which are kind of universal. With me, I, I don't know if I told this story, but around the time I wasn't sure if the Spotify deal was going to work out or not, because, you know, they kind of put it out to you. Then they're like, we'll get back with our team. That's always like the big thing. And you're like, oh my God, I hope that works out. Is that going to work out? Uh, I kept seeing hummingbirds everywhere. And that's always my thing. So I remember I sat down at a garden, like right after the phone call, we were on vacation, right? Out, and I just sat down at a random um, patio table and it was covered in like metal hummingbirds. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So it's just, whatever it is for you, it can mean, hey, it's going to, either way, it'll work out. That's kind of what I interpreted from it. And we're here for you and it's happening in the right way. So, okay. Now I don't usually find these things myself, but <laughs> I'm going to say this coins. I'm actually doing my part and <laughs> oh. oh, we're going to go here. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We're going there. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm yeah. going to let them decide. Okay, fine. Okay. I'm going to do my part here because I, I have been, this is very off topic. Yeah. This is way off topic, <laughs> but you like know, a, sometimes this is look, a personal, f- yeah. these are the fights we have. Okay. This go would, ahead. Okay. You, this fight, you would have thought, like I had basically, you know, spent fifty thousand dollars on a credit card at some crazy strip club in Vegas. That's how bad she was. Okay. True, I was very okay. bad. All I did was I walked outside and I had a penny in my pocket, a penny, and I took it and I threw it into the grass. Okay, that's all I did, and I got the wrath. Oh, you did. I got the wrath of Mystic Michaela. Let me back this up. Since I met you, you've you don't like change like some little annoying person like you don't like change and i say just give it to me i'll take your change i put in my change purse i'll take my change you don't like change so since i met you like we'll walk out of target if you have change you just like throw it into the parking lot and i think that's so one Uh, rude no it's like a penny it's rude i don't like it because it's like disrespectful to money it's disrespectful to it's just it's wasteful and I've always hated it. So then you stop, I mean, at least around me doing that. Okay. And you'll just leave it in, of course, you do self-checkout. You'll leave it in the self-checkout cup or whatever. Right. So I'm like, fine, right. whatever. Or we've talked about how you, quote, tip, quote, it to, like, whoever. Like, you try to tip everybody because you don't want, you keep the change. <laughs> and the guy at Target's like, I don't okay. do that. <laughs> okay. Keep your 22 cents. Okay. okay. Anyways. So this has been an ongoing 20 plus year issue I've had with you. And I've told you that it's a terrible symbol to send out to the universe, just throwing away money like that. And I'm outside and you take some pennies and you throw them into the lawn. And I'm like, (laughs) two things. One, the lawn mower. And two, you just told the universe you don't respect abundance. Okay. I don't care that it's a penny. That's 3D world stuff. That represents abundance, and you just threw it into the lawn like an entitled person. But you know what I, I was, know you brought it up, but, so now but, I'm getting all yeah, mad again. I know. Okay, and but I'm what married I, to you, what I was so doing, I have to deal with whatever karmic wrath that okay, inflicts fine. on you but, bothers me too now. But now, what you don't realize what I was doing this whole time, I was spreading divine symbols. Even okay, in the parking I, lot, okay, it would make more sense. No, I was spreading divine to symbols. To what, the squirrels? Who's searching our lawn for your penny? Someone, the person that will come at the right moment will find that penny and it will be a sign for them and they'll be aligned but to the universe. But you know that's not what you did it for. Your true intention was you don't like change in your pocket because it jingles. Well, yeah, it's because like it's dirty and I don't want it to touch other things that are in my pocket. See? It's not about, you just admitted it. It's not about, no, it's about giving the, it to anybody. It's about, it's about your own selfish germ phobia. <laughs> All right, fine. It is what it is. All right. Let's All do right. two, a couple we'll let more. everybody right. decide. Debate. Yeah, debate. debate. Is it okay that I threw the penny no, it's so not. I can spread a symbol well, of divine timing? Like, I like to save them. Like, I like to save all our change. All right. Okay. All right. Let's do All right. Gut instinct. Like, <laughs> like feel, I regret that. You feel it in. <laughs> I should have gone there. They're always going to agree with you. All no, right. there'll be a couple that don't. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have like a couple people that'll be like, yeah, you know, secretly, I'm not going to say this out loud. <laughs> But Scotty, I'm with you. Like I don't like change either, yeah, Scotty. Don't tell her, but I'm with you. <laughs> it's okay. You 
can be with him. All right. All right. Gut instinct. Gut feeling. I mean, I always find that's like, you know, like just I feel nervous or something. Yeah. And maybe I just had bad clams. But is there something to the gut instinct? Yeah, it's hard because we have to differentiate it from fear. Um, There's good fear, bad fear. I mean, that takes time to differentiate. I should do a whole podcast episode on that, like differentiating the voices. Because there's you you can learn what intuition is versus the fear that keeps you from doing things that are going to help you. But usually what I, here's my ground rule. Uh, the ego voice is never the first voice. So if the first instinct you, you need to trust the, and learn, the very first instinct you get is correct. So if you immediately meet somebody and you're like, no, like that's the one to listen to, not what you get later. Um, and I know they say don't judge a book by its cover and okay, fine. But like, you still have to listen to yourself. Very, very first instinct about anything. This, this can also happen with like opportunities and people that you meet or situations that you find yourself in needing to make a decision about. Okay. All right. And the last one we're going to do today, um, seeing angel numbers. I know there's this person, <laughs> they wrote a book about it. Really good book. You can get it on Amazon. It's called the angel numbers book. Um, <laughs> yes, fantastic book, incredible. If you haven't bought a copy, please do. If you only bought one copy, buy like three more. Uh, the Angel of Rumors book by Mystic Michaela. Thank you for everyone who bought one. Yes, we thank every single one of you. Yes, we are, very I mean, you don't know how much that means to a us that you bought a book, and uh, just we have so much gratitude for you. And yeah, it, you don't know we're we're no, in, I know. the we thankfulness think that we day. have yes <laughs> is incredible all right so seeing angel numbers one 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 two 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 yeah i know we've talked about this many times i know we've talked about it. i mean the more but, i'll just say this the more you notice them the more you'll notice them and the more synchronistic it'll get to the, like because there's always that part am i noticing them because i want to and then they'll just start slapping you in the face and you're like okay <laughs> like obviously i get it so all right so all those things can tell you like hey it's gonna be okay it's working out currently Yes, it will happen when it happens. All right. It is we got what couple, it is. It, we got a couple ads and then your speech on angel, uh, sorry, divine on what? time. Yeah. Divine time. <laughs> My favorite thing to do is get the Stitch Fix box. And then I do a little fashion show for the family and they're like, oh my God, it's so cute. It's so cute. Every time it just surprises and delights us all. I hate shopping. I tell you guys this all the time. And Stitch Fix, they do all the hard work for me. Um, Whatever your style, now more than ever is the time to just rock it. But maybe you can use just a little nudge to find some new looks. That's my thing. That's where Stitch Fix can help you out. It is fun and easy to get started. First, take a few minutes to set up your Stitch Fix style profile. Answer a few questions about what you like to wear, which let me tell you is incredibly accurate when your stylist helps you out, what you don't like to wear, and how open you are to trying new styles. Then Stitch Fixes, expert stylists, a real person will go to work finding items exclusively for you. Every piece is handpicked for you and is unique to your size, style, and in your budget, making it the best way to discover clothes that make you look and feel your best. Stitch Fix will send you five pieces to try on at home, keep what you love, and send back what you don't, shipping, returns, and exchanges, easy and free. Plus, there's no subscription required. Try once or set up automatic deliveries. There are no hidden fees ever. Sign up for Stitch Fix and get the season's latest pieces for women, men, and kids. Sign up today at stitchfix.com slash KYA to get $20 off your first purchase at stitchfix.com slash KYA to get $20 off your first purchase. Limited time offer. Purchase within two days of sign up. Listen, looking and feeling your best should never mean deprivation. Instead, choose joy and abundance. Sakara's organic, plant-rich, transformational nutrition programs are designed to help you cultivate body intelligence so you can nourish your body and experience the results you want. And let me tell you firsthand, it is 
delicious. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Sakara gives you the tools you need to transform your life with their organic ready to eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. Their nutritionally designed chef crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful plant rich ingredients, helping you boost your energy, support your digestion, curb those sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. Plus, it's all delivered right to your door, ready to eat. Sakara's functional, plant-rich wellness essentials help you create a body you love living in. From their best-selling metabolism super powder to the foundation, their daily supplement packs, Sakara's products are designed to support your wellness goals anytime, anywhere. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash KYA and enter code KYA at checkout. That's Sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A.com slash KYA to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash KYA. Before we talk about divine timing, let's talk about control. We want control. Control makes us feel safe. Our egos are always looking for it, craving it, seeking it out in all spaces. But control, of course, is an illusion. And even when we don't have it, our egos will trick us into thinking that we do. I see it go both ways. Generally speaking, the word control can bring up a certain type of person who wants to be in charge. I think that's the thought we all get in our head. The ones with the power suits and the big checkbooks. That's the image a lot of us have in mind when we think of somebody who loves control, a control freak on a power binge. But many of you listening actually go the total opposite. The control doesn't, the ego doesn't care what control looks like, whether it's positive or negative. So many of you listening may experience your ego telling you that you have control because you're the person who caused the problem by not being good enough or that you're the reason why something failed or that you're the only one who can control the issue that's happening in the family by being destructive to yourself, that you have control if you hurt yourself in some way. That's how our egos can manifest control too. Control can look like self-destruction. It can come in the form of drug or alcohol abuse, controlling how your body reacts to things, eating disorders. It can manifest in issues with spending too much money. Control can manifest in you having different relationships with lots of different people and feeling like you have control because you're stopping and starting a relationship all the time or at work. You feel like you have control because you're quitting and getting hired over and over again in a pattern-like way. Your ego can trick you into thinking that control is also something that you want, something that you need, something that feels real, something that's good for you, something that feels exciting. We try to control our outside environment so as to control our emotions and our anxieties. A lot of us have very deep feelings, so we try to control our world so we don't have to react to it in ways we can't cope with emotionally. We don't want to feel a certain way inside, so we will do things to control how we view the world. We can pretend a friend is good because we don't want to deal with the reality that they are using us. Or that a family member is loving and don't mean what they say when we actually don't really want to deal with the fact that they haven't been responsible or kind. We try to control how we see things so as to save ourselves from the fallout of what really is because we feel like we can't handle it on a subconscious level. Also, your ego likes to control the narrative so that it doesn't have to change. Remember, the ego is the human part of us and we all have it that doesn't like change. It sees how you're existing and tries to just maintain that existence. And the ego is a wonderful thing. It's not going anywhere. It keeps us alive. It's a human necessity, but you have to notice it so that it doesn't control you. 
So I have to talk about control when I talk about divine timing because this need to control our lives has a lot to do with timing. We want to hurry things up, move them along. We want the person we're supposed to be with, be the one we're all ready with, or the house on the hill be ours now instead of this other starter home we don't like as much. We want this promotion so badly to happen in this specific way because it should. It makes sense. We deserve it. Should be ours right now. But when we put our control on the timing of the universe, we actually limit ourselves. We shoot ourselves in the foot. And the saddest thing of all, and we all have to figure this out at some point, is that when we try to dictate our own timeline for the sake of feeling in control, we actually lose any control that we have. We lose all control. Instead of focusing on the world we can't control, this outside world, which is the biggest time waster of it all, we need to be focusing on what we can control. What can we control? Well, we can control our own spiritual connection, our strength, our resilience, our ability to see and absorb and accept lessons and see the bigger picture when we are being pushed around by the world. We can see with more clarity what decisions we can make that actually are present instead of lie to ourselves into thinking we have more choices than we do in places we do not. The 3D world, the third dimensional ego-driven society that we live in wants you to think you have control. They set up a whole society around it. They market it to you. Do this, buy that, plan for this, get this app, don't forget to do this. And it's all it's truly all nonsense. It's They're marketing to your ego so that you feel like you have control. The place you have control is yours. It's within. It's nothing you can purchase or buy. There's no app for it. There's no 401k plan for it. And perhaps that is why we are told to undervalue it and dismiss it. Because the power you already have, the power you were born with and have right now that nobody can take away from you, the universe is linked to it. So, of course, the 3D world wants to say that it's meaningless and nothing and not special. But understanding how to flow with it instead of against it will give you more control than you've ever had anywhere else. So let's talk about divine timing. When we think about divine timing, you have to think about it in hindsight. That's the only way to see divine timing and how it's worked for you. Looking back on your life, what are the things you wanted so badly that you are really seeing right now you either were not ready for or weren't ready for you or you're so thankful it didn't work out the way you thought you wanted it to work out? You can see that the way things did end up working out do just that. They just work out. And and the way they ha- they had happened, you could never in a million years have imagined the way it connected and all came together. You'll see that there's this force bigger than you, and it's in charge. The more you look to the past and how amazing the way things came together, you can feel that amazement. How did you meet a partner? What if I didn't go to this appointment that day or an opportunity didn't fall fall into my lap? You'll see that there was nothing you really could have done differently, and at the same time, that it all felt so happenstance or lucky, that there was really no way to prepare for a lot of it, no way to even know it was coming, except that you can think about it. You can think about it almost to the point of your mindset was in a certain spot at that time. How many people do I talk to? They met the person they were looking for when they weren't looking. They got the job that was meant for them when somebody just happened to mention it to them and it just worked out. If you look back on those times when things did work out for you, what mindset were you in? Chances are, You were ready for it without being desperate or needing it. So let's talk about the things you have to understand about divine timing. Number one, are you ready? The first thing you have to understand here is that the universe will only give you what you need when you're ready for it. I see many people bashing down closed doors. If a door slams in your face more than once, it's time to find a new way to do things. So if you're trying to get the one job at the one spot and you keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and you're getting no, 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 no slam door in your face all the time, it is time to try something else. 
There's a difference between hard work and struggle. If you're hitting a wall every time you try to do something with zero headway, it's time to just change up your way of doing it. Not give up, just brainstorm a new way to do it. Because you're only going to get what you need when you're ready for it. Therefore, all your control is inside of you. You got to get your mindset right to be prepared for whatever it is you feel you want. Patience. Patience means you understand the rules of the universe, these divine timing rules. It does not mean that you hang your hat on divine timing. Patience means that you're calm. You see that in time it'll happen when it's supposed to. And while you continue to make strides and work for what you want and work on yourself and focus on where you do have control, which is your connection within, it doesn't mean that you sit around constantly hoping for something that isn't happening. You don't beg or plead or consistently bang down closed doors. It means you proceed with action, but also with an understanding that in time it will happen when it is supposed to, as long as you keep working on the things you can control. Number three, do not force it. You cannot make someone love you. You can't make someone see your worth. You can't make a context that isn't working for you change. You have to go with the flow. If a situation isn't working for you, it's time to change it. Where in your life are you forcing things? Where in your life are you closing your eyes to someone or something or some environment that doesn't see or value or respect you? Where are you forcing your dreams to happen where it's just not a great place to grow them? It's like growing a cactus in in the in the snow. It's just you can try, but it's just the forces are against you. Where in your life are the forces against you? Time to look at those places and be like, oh, I've been forcing it here. I think it's time for me to, to change up my strategy. Detach. In episode 108, is detachment the key to getting what you want? I talk about detachment. Big thing with detachment. If you take nothing else from today, you can go listen to that episode if you need a refresher. But instead of focusing on what the, the thing that you want, instead of focusing on that, like I want, I don't know, I want Bobby to love me. Instead of focusing on that, focus on what it would feel like to be loved. Not by Bobby, by somebody. Make that face blurry. Focus on the feelings. Jump over whatever your thing that you want is and just focus on what it would what it does feel like to have that. And in your meditations and throughout the day and as you're thinking about it, instead of focusing on I want, I want, I want, I want, just try to feel all those feelings as if they already are within you. You can do that. You can feel unconditionally loved because you are. You're unconditionally loved by the universe. So you can feel unconditionally loved. You can feel safe. What does that feel like to feel safe? What does that feel? So focusing on the feelings, not on how it's going to happen, just on how it feels when it does happen, that gives the universe a lot of grace, a lot of space. So focusing on feelings, not the actions or the details, because a lot of times with divine timing is it'll work out the way it's supposed to in the way it's supposed to work out. But if you're dictating to the universe, no, it can't happen this way. It has to happen this way. It, it, the universe just steps out. And again, I talked about that in episode 108. Number five, don't over plan. I say this to people all the time. I see this in readings a lot. I've told you all um, when I do readings, it's message from spirit and it comes through me. What's interesting is, is it happens to be a lot of the same advice for people. So that's why I I wanted to do this uh, podcast and the the whole reason for this podcast is I keep getting, spirit has a lot to say to you and it's very applicable for a lot of people. And And the one thing is don't over plan. You can only make choices with what is your reality now. So let's say, for example, you really want to move. I really want to move. But at the same time, you're single. So you're like, well, I can't date now because I know I'm going to be moving at some point. But are you moving now? You know, I mean, do you you have a date to move? No, no. Then then why are you limiting yourself in in love because you know you're going to move? Like, why are, what is, 
you're plan you're living in a hypothetical future that's not even here yet. Today, what's going on? Well, I'm single and I'm working and I live in this town. I'm like, okay, you know, get out there, go smile at people, have fun, whatever. But don't plan for a future that hasn't existed yet. That is such a surefire way to keep you stuck. And it actually pushes divine timing out of your life because now the timeline doesn't even, you're not even on it anymore because you've just kind of paused it because you're living in like a fantasy. It's not real. Number six, let's get excited about the unknown. Change is super duper scary. None of us like it, but there's a part of you that sure does like it. And that's your soul identity. You did not come here to be safe to live a safe, quiet life. You came here to go for it. And for some people, go for it is a lot different than other people. And that's okay. You can, you can have your own <laughs> definition of what go for it means. For some people, go for it is like they're the ones, you know, scan down crazy mountains on the Olympics. Great. Okay, that's their level of go for it. Your go for it might be, I took an art class this week. I don't know anybody. I'm super proud of myself for going. I'm scared to meet new people. That might be your go for it. But the point is, go for it. Don't measure against anybody else's go for it. But when you're dealing with divine timing, you got to give divine timing something to work with here. You have to get out there and just put yourself in situations where the universe, you got to throw the universe a bone. So, so you got to put yourself in new opportunities and interesting situations and out of your comfort zone moments so that the universe can use that energy along with your like, all right, I'm going for it. Open-minded attitude to manifest something for you. It's kind of like if somebody wanted to knit you a sweater and, and you were tugging on the yarn. It's like, you, hey, you had to give me something to knit with. You can't just be tugging on the yarn the whole time. It's too much tension. So doing cool things in your life, getting excited about it, going for it, wherever going for it means, maybe that's saying yes to a lunch date with a friend or something when you normally just would go home. That gives the universe more yarn to knit you that sweater with. That's, that's divine timing love of that. So Get excited about doing fun stuff. Put yourself out there. Let the, it just, yeah, it gives you more of an opportunity for magic to happen. F All right, number seven, you got to find the lessons and you got to learn to sit in your own discomfort. I did an episode, I forget what number, like this, um, your spiritual slump. So many awesome lessons come when you're in a slump or stagnant or stuck. Sometimes the only way out of it, I see this in a lot of readings too, I'll, some people will read you and you're, and you're in the middle of a slump or you're very stuck. It's like, ooh, you'll get out of there when you get what you're supposed to know out of it. So sometimes you are stuck. Divine timing has you, and you're never stuck, but you feel stuck. So sometimes you feel stuck because divine timing's like, well, you, you got to learn the thing to level up. It's like a, it's like a video game. <laughs> you can't, you can't get to the next level till you pass this one challenge. So we're just going to keep redoing it over and over and over again until you figure it out. And that's, you can feel like that sometimes, but really that thing that you got to learn is whatever lesson you're supposed to learn from being a stalker in the slump. And that usually comes with you figuring something, a pattern out about yourself that isn't fun to realize, but you have to. And then secondly, Sitting in your discomfort isn't the worst thing. There's not just the happy you. There's the sad you. There's the anxious you. There's the stressed out you. There's the scared you. Emotions aren't anything to be feared. You can have many, many, many of them in one day. And putting a lot of worth in the happier ones and not a lot of worth in the sadder ones, that doesn't do you any favors. So divine timing is all about sitting in your discomfort and being patient while you wait for the timing to be right. But I just want to mention here, there's no such thing as time. I should probably should have started with this. I've said this before. There's no such thing as time. It's always the same moment. So therefore, you can 
work on yourself within and speed up your divine timing by just getting on the right track mentally, which comes from going inward, sitting in your discomfort, figuring out what the lessons are, and coming to terms with patterns that need to be changed or leveled up. Finally, eight. This is not surrendering. I think like, you know, in the spiritual community, some parts of it, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing with the whole divine timing thing. Like you just sit in a yoga pose for like, for a day and like, I'm patient, divine time. And the divine timing just like delivers the opportunity to you on a silver platter. It's like, it doesn't work that way. The universe is not a magic wand. You, you need to pick up on cues, inspirations, hunches, and feelings to move towards intuitively what works for you. Things that you got to open yourself up so the universe can speak to you, really. And then that's how divine timing works. When Again, when you're ready for it, it will work. But this isn't just you sit around and wait. That's a terrible energy sitting around and waiting. You're always working towards something and you don't just surrender. And there's a difference between like letting it go and detaching and like surrendering a hundred percent because that means that you've just given up doing anything. You're just going to stand still. So there's no standing still. And the universe wants to see you work really hard at things too. So what to do next? The next steps you have to take is mostly working on, for really focusing on your work, not the outcome of your work. So that's your inward connection and all the things that go with that. So if this is therapy, if this is um, health and wellness things that you have to do, if this is meditation and spiritual discoveries, all these things working together are, are really the first thing that really assists divine timing to enter into your life and help you out. The other thing is setting intentions and just letting them go. And I've talked a lot about this in other episodes, but an intention focusing again on your feelings as if you already have them occurring in your life rather than a specific outcome. Another thing is sometimes we think we know what we want. I, you know, I want this house. I want this guy. I want this girl. I want this what. Add this little thing at the end or it's equivalent. So I want, I want that house. That's the house I want or it's equivalent. And that just gives divine timing a little bit more leeway. And what you're saying is I trust that whatever the universe comes up with will be the best thing in my best interest. So I want that, but I also will take anything that is it's equivalent or better. I'll take that too because understanding that kind of that faith that what what is greater than us knows what's best for us. So giving kind of that that freedom to the universe to work with. You're going to see a lot of <laughs> when you start paying attention, you're going to be seeing a lot of signs and symbols that divine timing is around you. You uh, might have this deep intuitive, especially the more you work on this, this feeling of I am loved, I am watched, I am protected. And it's hard to explain. It's just a feeling of I am safe. I am connected. I'm strong. Like you feel those feelings inside of you. You're also going to start seeing angel numbers. You're going to start seeing angel symbols maybe feathers or birds or whatever speaks to you. You might be getting intense spiritual downloads or amazing realizations about things in your own life. When divine timing is about to really step in for you, you will see that as soon as it does, what's interesting is you already are at a place where it's kind of like you're grateful for it, but you already feel okay whether what you want to happen or not does because you did all these things to get yourself in a place where you're whole on your own. And I feel like with divine timing and how frustrated we get and how much we need control in our lives, just trying to see the difference between magical thinking and divine timing can help us understand its purpose 
and understand where it's helped us in the past and get excited for where it's always going to help us again in the future. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. All right. So to continue the conversation about divine timing, we asked the Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family on the Facebook group page to tell us some of their example of when has divine timing showed up in your life. Amazing stories. Amazing stories. I think we had over, uh, I think we had about 150 of them, a little under that. Uh, We picked out a few. We did go through them all. They were incredible. Yeah. And I'll let you start. I highly recommend, especially if you're feeling a little frustrated, just go read that thread. It's very inspiring to see how it, the the similarities with how things work out. Yes. Again, in hindsight, oh, thank goodness this happened. Otherwise, this couldn't have. Or it's, it's just helpful when you're in a hard time. All right, yeah, so- and then also look at the thread with all the Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family pets. Oh, that's so, always so, yes. just... An, <laughs> so- no matter what, that's always an up. Yes. <laughs> All right, I wanted to start with um, Kristen. Kristen says, I always like to say rejection is redirection from the universe. At the end of 2020, I applied for a grad program in dance and movement therapy at Pratt and NYC. I I interviewed and ultimately received a no. I was crushed. But by chance, I discovered a grad program the next day at a university much closer to me that was much more aligned to who I am as a person. Starting next year, I will be attending a program in expressive arts therapy, which combines all of my love dance, music, art, and theater into a way of helping people hear from their traumas, heal from their traumas. The icing on the cake is that the school is only 30 minutes from the theater where my husband just accepted his dream job. They sound like an entertaining couple. They do. Yeah. Like they could dance and they're probably really fun to have. That was really weird because I actually picked that one too. You did? Is that a synchronicity? Yeah. I think that's crazy. That's crazy. No, I didn't actually. Oh, you didn't? (laughs) I was like, we need to have them over. Like they seem like fun. Okay. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Like Richard Vicky from Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> get out our That's an old one. Get out. Oh, I, I wonder that one why out. They, yeah. they haven't sponsored us in a while. Okay. All right. I have <laughs> Chelsea here. All right. Chelsea writes, when my ex and I broke up, I was finding myself constantly giving him so much of my energy to help him out of depression and navigate his career switch. The love was there, but it was becoming taxing. And this, I guess it was after they broke up too. Mm. I remember asking my spirit guides to help me move forward. And the next day, suddenly out of nowhere, my ex suddenly dumped me. Oh, wow. Okay. Within two weeks, my best friend sent me an audition for Pop Sugar Fitness, and I made it through all four rounds. I posted about it in the Mr. Kale Spiritual Family page several times. Um, within the month, I also got accepted into a sports chiropractic program. Divine timing came in hot for me the second I decided, decided to start fresh. And then she has a picture of Fire Up Your Core and Glutes on YouTube. And this is another synchronicity. I've actually done this one. Yeah. Yeah. I've okay. done the core glutes 30 minute hit challenge from Pop Sugar Fitness. <laughs> that's so your that's jam. Yeah. So it's really weird that I actually picked this and then realized. That's that, awesome. That I, I love it. that when she got rid of that energy that was like sucking the life out of her, like all of a sudden it's almost like a catapult into awesome things that are about her. I think yeah. that's super cool. Yes. And thank you for that because it really gets my glutes in shape. Yeah. Your glutes are burning. They're very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Emily writes, this is a serious one, but I feel like it was really good to share this one. Emily writes, I was ready to settle in Seattle. I had met a great guy online and we started dating. I had a new job that I loved and I was in the city I had been dreaming of living in for over 20 years. Within six weeks, the guy dumped me and I lost the job. I was suicidal. For about six months prior to the move, I had references to Tennessee being thrown across my path every day, and I didn't understand why. I'd never been there, never thought about going. Without really trying hard, I got a new job in Tennessee less than a week after the other fired me. I moved, and with within four months, I met a wonderful man. It has been two years, and I cannot imagine a better match for me than this guy. Wow, I love that. Yeah, that's, that's great. hard. Sometimes yeah. when you're in the lowest, lowest spot. You, you get open to those messages, those yeah. like Tennessee messages. She never would have paid attention to him if she wasn't low enough to be like, I need some sort of change like that. I think that that's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Emily. I was really vulnerable, and I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Okay. Wow. All right, and my last one, of course, ties back into us, mm. to me, so I had to pick that one, <laughs> as I always do. All right, so <laughs> Sophia writes uh, our podcast. Oh. Okay, and... So she had a friend, Mayela, who was an MM enthusiast, 
and suggested the podcast to her during a really rough time in Sophia's life. Uh, she writes, without that moment, I would be a shell of a person still suppressing my intuition and my blue indigo purple self. Finding this podcast reemerged me into things that came naturally to me as a child, kid, teen. So much thanks to you. Uh, Maella then writes, she agrees. I honestly can't remember how I find, found KYA. I really can't, but it's changed everything for Aww. the both of us. Then they both write, it was divine timing. And this is really cool for me. This is why I picked it, because Sophia was the one that told me about Benjamin Moore doing uh, the Aura paint line. Yes. And I would have never known that, and I would have never written to them. Right. So all divine timing. Because I'm doing, I'm, I'm collaborating with, with Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjamin Moore, Moore right just now. to clarify that. Yes. Because Sophia just, re- you know, we read our DMs. We read as many of our DMs as we can. Right. And she just was like, hey, you should look into this. And of right. course, Red Scotty's like, oh, okay. Right. But she would never heard of us if my Yeah, and- that never would have, just like that whole loop. It's a whole We're loop. all connected. You know I, okay. I'm a skeptic on a lot of things. Yeah. But I'm going to say this right here, right now. Really? Divine timing. I believe it. You believe I'm a believer. It. 100%. Chakras. Where are you at? Chakra 73, 73%. All right. Past lives, where are you? Past lives. Well, your mom was Anne Frank in a past life. Although there is an imposter out oh, there we right heard now. That. Yeah, there's yeah. an imposter out there. <laughs> okay, the this, this spiritual family alerted me to this imposter. I think she has like the name of a racehorse, Barbaro or something. But uh, no, it's your mom. It's your mom. Okay, okay. She's, okay, so uh, past lives. Past uh, lives. Yeah, He's uh, joking. Se- uh, yeah, okay. Uh, 68. 68%. 68%. All right. Anything else you got on me? Astral traveling. Astral traveling. I've never done it myself. Although I know you the say neighbor I do said it. you did it last oh, night with her. Right. Someone told me I was <laughs> the in there. neighbor the- said so. This is weird too. Two people last week <laughs> told me I was in their dreams. I think you're astral traveling on the side. All right. 42%. 40, <laughs> 42%. Up from 37. All what right. Else? Anything um, else? Aliens. Aliens. Hmm. Like oh, real life, like, like star seeds? No, or like, like, real like straight up they're watching us. And- like they're here, UFOs? Yeah. Uh, 14%. Really? That's it? Yeah. I'm the highest on that. You, yeah, because you were abducted. <laughs> <laughs> overtime. I'm calling it overtime. We're in overtime now. <laughs> overtime. Okay. Anything, you could say anything that, in overtime. Okay, that, that cat talked to you that we had that one time. 100%. Uh, cats. <laughs> what episode cat, was that? Demonic cat that talks was, to person. 100%. Just so you know, I was yeah. woken up at 5 a.m. Megan, yeah. the that, cat's plotting to kill me. <laughs> That happened. All right, what else you got for me? Twin flames? Twin flames? A twin flames. Uh, I have one. <laughs> Jebediah, 11%. Okay, grounding. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> all right. All, all right. right, let's end this. Thank you all so much. You know this podcast is for you and about you. We're so glad you spent some time with us today. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone the brain candy podcast find our link in the show notes or simply search for the brain candy podcast on your podcast app